All right, I have to redeem myself after that last game and play faster and talk less. Okay, good. We have a 1900 player. Should be a good game if I don't blunder all my pieces away like last game and take too long. He's already playing fast and up on time a little bit. So I'm playing conservatively here. As is he. I'd like to e5 in, but they usually prevent that. His bishop has a nice home on h2. Not a lot to say about this position. This seems somewhat foolish, but he is definitely going to be pushing pawns in the end game. Let's see what I can get to with this. So bishop d7, he plays c5, c6. We'll just give him the exchange back. Player Roden has arrived. Hello, Roden. As usual, I have some pawn issues. But that's what he gets for giving up the piece. Okay, I am playing without a plan here. I need to either break up his pawns on the queen side or get some activity on the king side and as of yet this is trouble he's going to play b6 threatening moving on to on to b7 with a fork so I'm trying to break up these pawns so I can play a piece to c6, and he's not having that. Now if I move this knight back, the question is, is he going to play b6 and give up the c pawn? Sorry, the b pawn. Okay, I need to take control of these light squares. Um, this is my, my hope anyway. He plays queen b7. The question is, can I play knight takes? Then bishop takes. Let's see, knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes. No, I cannot. This is serious trouble. What he can do here is just play queen b8. There's really not much I can do to respond. I, my idea is playing f4 and stopping the bishop from getting in uh, and defending all these squares.
this pretty much ends it. If he takes f4, I can only hope for that. <coughs> it's going to weaken his um, his d pawn immensely. I can play on for tricks and time, but his knight's gonna get in very easily here. He has knight takes pawn check, which he didn't seem interested in. Great. I just lose on time. 